Okay, we're going to talk more about X Windows and finish up the X Window session right now. Um, what I want to talk about right now is that X Windows was designed from day one to be to involve networking so that you would be able to actually send windows from one computer to another or from one X server to another X server over the um, over a network and uh, eventually over the internet. So um, there's a couple different ways of doing this. Um, it's very basic to the X Windows design and we're going to um, look at a couple, uh, look at at least one way of doing that. I have a machine on my desk, on my left hand side I have a laptop sitting right next to me that I have also put into my network. It is running Nopix. Um, it's running SUSE, uh, it's running Nopix. My main workstation that I'm sitting at is running SUS. So I should be able to log on to the Nopix machine and have it send me Windows back across the network. One way of doing this, the traditional way of doing this would be to use Telnet and I would Telnet to the Nopix machine. I'd set some access rights on my machine to accept their X windows and I would uh, set a display variable or something of that type on the uh, Nopix machine and then when I sent X windows back um, uh, they would end up on my desktop. I'm not going to display that um, method uh, for various reasons. Uh, for one thing we're using uh, more and more secured protocols. Most of us have kind of moved away from Telnet and FTP and we're using secure shell with uh, things like SSH, SCP, and uh, SFTP instead of the insecure uh, protocols. Um, and they're a little easier to use actually. We have fewer things to take care of. More of the things are taken care of automatically. What I can do is I can log on to the Nopix machine by typing the following command line um, where um, SSH X, SSA, SSH space minus capital X which says th um, the minus capital X says to tunnel X windows through my secure tunnel that I am building that goes across my network now. And then I need the username of the person I'm logging in on on the Nopix machine, which is Nopix, and then um, ampersand the IP of the Nopix machine, which is uh, 192.168.1.102. And if I log on like that, it will ask me for my password. I believe I have the password here. And guess what? I am logged on to the Nopix machine. So I should be able to bring up X window type stuff. And guess what? I have a clock that came up and it's running on the Nopix machine. Let's type X eyes. That's kind of a cool thing. I've got eyes that have come up and they are from the Nopix machine. Um, well, how do I know they're from the Nopix machine? Well, I know they are, but let's take um, this um, window here that I'm in right now is on the SUSE machine. Is Ice Weasel on the SUSE machine? No, there is no Ice Weasel because SUSE uses Firefox and instead of Ice Weasel. But Ice Weasel is on the Nopix machine, so if I bring that up, Guess what? It comes up and here I am on on the Nopix machine. I am sitting at the SUSE machine, logged on to the Nopix machine, running all sorts of um, interesting stuff. Um, Calligator.org. Um, yeah, well, um, that's cool. Okay. Now let me log out here and um, oop, we're going to 
log out, and I guess I'm I, I am back on the SUS machine, right? So I'm back on the SUS machine. Now let me log on to another machine. This is a machine that is sitting a hundred and some miles from my desk right now. I'm logging off on using uh, SSH, so it's a secure login, going across the internet. All traffic is being encrypted to a machine that is about 100 miles from my desk um, at nakedape.cc. Um, I have an account on that machine called dmandel. So it's uh, dmandel at uh, yuki. Um, nakedape.cc, and I'm going to send X protocols across. This actually does not ask me for my password. The reason for that is uh, if you read the man pages for SSH, and they are long and complex, you'll see that there is a system to set up uh, pre-assigned keys, and I can put pre-assigned keys on my machine and on the remote machine. And once that's done, then I can log across the network very, very securely, more securely than if I used passwords. And uh, no password ever has to pass, um, ba pass between us. But because of these pre-assigned keys, it knows that there's got to be these keys on each machine before I can communicate. OK, well, anyway, I'm on this remote machine. I see there's a directory down here called pdxlinux.org. I'm going to go down into that directory. There's a directory down under that called docs. I'm going to go down under that directory. There's a file there called index.html. Let's edit that file. And uh, this should bring up a version of X Windows. Uh, it will bring it up rather slowly, because, or a version of Emacs, I'm sorry, uh, using X Windows across the network. It will bring it up slowly because um, going across the internet um, with X Windows is a slow process. But it's a lot faster than driving 150 miles and driving 150 miles back. Um, and using this system, I can work on machines all across the world and do all sorts of things on them. Um, I can bring up the GUIs that drive the, um, uh, oh, the uh, systems administration tools. As an example, if I log, I can log on to a, a SUS machine in Florida and bring up Yacht 2 and do almost anything I want. I can upgrade the machine. I can. Uh, reconfigure it in all sorts of odd ways. I can change the firewall. I can, I, I can really fully administrate the machine. I have to be careful because you know when I'm changing the firewall, I got to make sure that I don't change the firewall in such a way that it blocks me from getting back in. Um, I can reboot the system, but I have to be careful because. Um, I can't halt the system, or else I got to get an airplane ticket to go to Florida to press the on button. Well, usually a telephone call to a sysadmin in Florida will do that. Um, but they may charge me um, for press for pressing that button. Um, but but I can do a lot. I can reboot the system. I can upgrade the system. Oh. I've installed disk drives where I've had somebody else install the disk drive, and then I've populated the disk drive, reformatted it, uh, formatted it, uh, partitioned it, um, uh, populated it, and then rebooted so the system would reboot onto the new disk drive. And um, so I, I can, it, it's a powerful tool. In this case, I've got my thing up here. If I, um, and this should look familiar. This is a website for the Portland Linux Unix group. If I want to make changes here, I make changes. I do Control X, Control S, because this is Emacs. I save the changes, and um, um, and um, oops, actually I want to save the changes, and. Um, 
get out of Emacs, and I've made changes on my website. Um, this is really pretty cool. It's a very powerful way of working. Um, X Windows has a lot to offer, a lot of features to offer us, and I think it's really a very cool, very useful system. In fact, I, I would think that if if uh, Windows ran X Windows and the whole world used X Windows, we would probably be using X Windows for a lot of things that we're stuck using a web browser for today. I, I'd rather be using X Windows to go to my bank's servers and um, run my banking software than trying to run it with uh, um, through through a browser. Although we're making the browser protocols more and more complex, so it's getting better to do that, but but it's a big pain because browsers really were not designed for doing the sorts of things we do with them. Um, in any case, um, this is a little display of X Windows, the power of X Windows. I really encourage you to explore X Windows more because it's a really cool protocol and it's used a lot. Um, I also want to say that we went through and we explored a few, just a very few, of the window managers available for X Windows. I should also add that uh, the only window managers we looked at were designed for the desktop. But because Linux runs on devices like this and little small devices that are not desktop devices or entertainment centers, systems, people are designing window managers that are oriented towards um, specialized needs, like the sort of, like if you're in a car and you've got a car entertainment system or a car navigation system, uh, you're driving the car and you're trying to press buttons and whatnot, you really need a window manager that is, one thing, has a touch screen, and second, has very big buttons and not many of them. And people are designing uh, window managers for those type of applications. Um, um, uh, they're used for a lot of things of that type. So. I think that covers X Windows. That covers Chapter 8. Bye-bye.